We talked about cardiac output, heart rate times stroke volume. That cardiac output, the amount of blood uh, our heart puts out a minute is very important. We also talked about vascular resistance, the amount of tone in the blood vessel. Those are two of the ways that the body can compensate for shock, certainly up to a point. Remember that decompensated shock occurs when we can no longer maintain the blood pressures. Now, there's a couple other things that you might see in, in shock, increased respirations. One, well, we have less blood. It certainly is good to keep as oxygenated as we can. But don't forget, when our body's tissues aren't getting perfused, we have some anaerobic metabolism, some acids. So those rapid respirations are also served to blow off some of that CO2 that occurs. And now the last thing is even though we try and compensate and get blood where? To the brain and to the kidneys, the brain can sense a lack of oxygen like that, right? It's like a furnace. It constantly burns fuel. And it's almost like it can never get enough. There's no reserve. If we don't get oxygen and glucose to the brain, it starts to malfunction pretty quickly. And how do we see that malfunction? We see that as an altered mental status. There might be an anxiety or a restlessness. And as shock progresses, it can become confusion or agitation and ultimately lead to unresponsiveness. So what's the picture of shock? Increased pulse, increased respirations, cool, pale, moist skin, sometimes nausea, and an altered mental status. Now note that I haven't spent a lot of time on blood pressure. Why is that? Because in your primary assessment, you can find all of these things without using a blood pressure cuff. In your primary assessment, you find that anxious patient with a rapid pulse, cool, moist skin, maybe breathing a little bit quickly. It shouldn't be a surprise when you put that blood pressure cuff on that they are in fact in shock. Understanding the hows and whys much more important than uh, memorizing bullet points of individual conditions. Shock is shock. And a patient that presents in a certain way should always make you think shock until proven otherwise. I hope this has helped you recognize why we see what we see in shock and recognize how trends in vital signs, gradually increasing pulse, gradually increasing respirations, and cool, pale, moist skin, all those things come together. And as you watch them worsen, the patient is getting worse before your eyes. At some point, they'll no longer be able to compensate, and then the blood pressure will drop.